Sensory awareness rope trails gained some popularity in the 1970s and then fell into disfavor. Based on two published articles, this video revisits the design, construction, and potential use of rope trails. The OWL Trail was constructed at Stony Acres in Northeast Pennsylvania. It is no longer there. The original premise of sensory awareness rope trails was to increase sensory perception by eliminating sight with a blindfold. It is a trail designed for the sighted, blindfolded, not for the visually handicapped. Although the trail was originally designed to be a self-guided trail, it works best in pairs where one person acts as the guide to the blindfolded person. Keep the trail short. Think a quarter of a mile. This is one lap around a track surrounding the local high school football field. Since most people are right-handed, the trail should flow in a counterclockwise direction. Design the trail to provide a variety of experiences. Think large rather than subtle differences. An open field versus the closed canopy of the forest. Consider adding a bridge to provide a change in the experience. Go-tos connect the experience to the guide rope. They can connect to nearby trees or shrubs. Using a go-to trail sign, they can point and connect objects and go-tos on the opposite side of the trail. They can connect to objects on the ground, like rocks. The concept of reach zones quantifies how far objects can be experienced from the main guide rope. With the right hand on the rope, participants can reach to the right no more than 34 inches. Distances will be less if children are the primary users of the trail. Holding onto the rope with the right hand, the participant can reach to their left roughly two feet. A go-to to the ground requires kneeling, which can extend the reach zone toward the ground. Kneeling and switching hands, holding the main rope, can extend the reach zone even further. The key point regarding reach zones is that objects connected by go-tos need to be fairly close to the trail. A sensory corral is a safe area where the blindfolded participant can explore a large area. Natural or man-made objects can be placed in the corral. Construction can use a 2x4 railing. In addition, it should have a railing 18 inches off the ground to prevent someone who is crawling from crawling outside the sensory corral. A rope railing can be used for the lower railing. And, if desired, it can be substituted for the upper railing also. For the second corral on the out trail, two by four upper and lower railings were used. A trail sign announcing the sensory corral can be located at its entrance. Consider using directional arrows on the railings to point the blindfolded participants to the exit. Two types of entrances and exits were provided. They are the normal and positive lock. The positive lock pretty much prevents somebody inadvertently exiting the corral. It is a little bit more secure. Nine trail signs were planned for the trail. Be sure to connect the sign to the main rope with the go-to. Although the letters can be indented using a router, it was found that raised letters were easier to read when blindfolded. The signs were kept simple. They were one or two words with letters that were two inches high and one inches wide. Sign seven read sun. Sign eight read north. Since the sun is in the south, north would be in the opposite direction. The guide can be helpful here and ask if the sun is in the south. If the participant doesn't get it right, it doesn't really matter because they are blindfolded. The entrance contained a bench, entrance sign, a sample go-to, blindfolds, and bushes to hide the trail. The trail is a loop trail that ends where it started. The entrance sign is displayed prominently. It can include the title and purpose of the trail. Just like an owl, the blindfold will help you to see and sense in the dark. Next, it indicates that the trail works best in pairs with one person blindfolded and the other serving as the guide. The instructions for the person blindfolded are simple. Follow the main guide rope. Use the go-to's to connect the experience. Indicating that you may need to kneel is barrier breaking. 
It complements the go-to which goes to the ground at the entrance. The instructions for the guide are suggestive. Note the suggestion made that the sun is in the southern portion of the sky. This sets up the experience at the next sign, which states north as well. Last, the sign indicates switching roles. Often the blindfolded person makes a good guide because they have already experienced the out trail blindfolded. By design, the first trail sign and go-to were in plain sight at the entrance. They are barrier breaking and help familiarize the blindfolded participant with the experience. Since the end of the trail is where it starts, the last trail sign is present also. Originally, braille trails were designed for the blind who didn't use the trails. A sensory awareness rope trail is a trail designed for sighted people blindfolded. The out trail was designed for sighted people blindfolded. The original trail was not finished because the author took another position. Hopefully the suggestions made in this video will stimulate additional interest in rope trails. It exemplifies designing the experience, in this case, to increase sensory perception.